You're watching Cheery TV. Howdy, howdy, everybody, and welcome back to Cannibal Crossing Quickies, where I talk about what I want to talk about, when I want to talk about it, and I've never done drugs. That is a consistent story that I will keep up for the rest of my life, because it is very true. I've not taken drugs, I've not done drugs, I'm not interested in drugs, and, uh, but, but, at the same time, no, no, no shade if you, if you do it, you know, you, you to each their own, be your own person, have your own time, however fun that may be, uh, for whatever situation you're doing. Either way, not, not something that interested me, ever. Um, and I don't, I can't imagine the last time I've even, like, um, well, I've, uh, to say I've had it is the wrong word, but the last time someone thought I've had it, because <laughs> uh, this is a pretty f frequent occurrence. I don't know if it's just because I'm a very stupid person by nature, or because of uh, just the way I compose myself, but a lot of times, co-workers, uh, friends... Family, not family, lost family, but some, a couple of times family. They thought I did drugs. They thought I was hardcore on like weed or something because I was just always so mellow and chuckly and shit. And they just thought I was always on something, which I always think I'm very funny because I've never. I, I, I used to be pretty uh, vocal about my just general distaste for it and uh, just disapproval. I don't really care much now if someone takes it, whatever the fuck. Just, just don't. Don't do it near me, because it smells like shit, and I hate it. But, you know, if you're gonna take it, fucking do what you want. You're your own person. Uh, but yeah, so... I've never really been the one to try anything like that. I've never been the one to do anything like that. Uh, and there's only one situation in my head that even could remotely relate to, like, a feeling of being on, like, a trip or something of that sort. And it was probably the worst day of my life in terms of just, like, uh, health speaking. I felt so terrible that day. And what happened the day before, uh, I was back in college. No, which really doesn't... I swear it wasn't drugs. People in college all the time thought I did drugs. It, it, it was insane. How <laughs> many people thought... They were just, they, I don't know. I don't know if it's my demeanor or whatever it is. But this isn't a drug story. This is, It technically is a drug story because I got my COVID vaccine. The first one. My first COVID vaccine that day. Um, well, the, the day before. I felt so immeasurably sick, and they were like, oh, you, you might feel something, you know, a few minutes in, you know, they, they, they made it very clear I was supposed to, like, wait for a while, and before I can actually leave, just in case I, like, collapsed, or something happened to me, so I'm like, who the fuck are, is putting this vaccine inside of my body, what's wrong with these people, and of course, because they told me I had to wait, because there might be complications, my brain was like, oh my god, my chest hurts a little bit, there's complications, oh my god, my legs starting to twitch, oh, complications, I was just freaking out in my brain, but I didn't tell anybody, I mean, I felt pretty fine, actually, if I'm being completely honest, but it was grand, I'm not here to, to, to bash on the vaccine, uh, I'm here to bash on my uh, situation, which I can only relate to the vaccine, because I was perfectly fine uh, the entire time uh, before this, and then I take, I get the vaccine, which I wasn't even planning on take, on getting, I didn't like, I wasn't opposed to it, I just didn't want to go out of my way to do it, but a bunch of uh, people, I was like eating something or other, I was, I was, I was, I was at the freaking lunch hall thing, eating food, uh, just, uh, I didn't have any classes afterwards, uh, I didn't have classes the next day, thankfully, and someone was like, hey, we're doing free COVID type, but COVID uh, vaccines in the down there because I was like a floor lower. I was like, if you want to go, I'm like, oh, you know what? Fuck it, why not? And so I did. I got it, and it, things were grand. Or so, so I didn't really believe, but I was like, yeah, you know. Either way, if I if something happens, I got a day off. So hey, <laughs> no no harm, no foul there. There was so much foul. <laughs> Because I, everything was grand until I went to bed. I just sneeze. Oh no. Uh oh. <coughs> uh, I feel like another one coming, but I don't think it's coming. Uh, yeah, no, we're good. Okay, but yeah, so uh, I go to bed. Everything's grand. Uh, I wake up, and holy shit, I couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, was I sick? I don't think so. I don't think I was very sick. I don't think they gave me, like horrible levels of like COVID in my brain or they were like melting my body with the vaccine uh, but I will say it definitely made me 
feel a little bit ouchy. Uh, I wasn't, like, my rose wasn't running, uh, like, I wasn't, like, going through, like, typical, like, after the flu vaccine, it'll feel, like, a little sick for a day. Uh, I was feeling something else, definitely pain. It was probably the worst migraines I've ever had in my entire life. I couldn't bear to stand for more than like 30 seconds before my head was just like, no, no, on the ground now. <laughs> it was, it was awful. It was terrible. It was really, really bad. And I was just like, holy shit, this is so much pain. What in the hell? Why is this happening to me? And I remember the vaccine. And I was like, oh, this might, maybe this is a, maybe this is a complication. I'm going to hope it's a complication because I, I ain't getting myself checked out. I'm just going to lay in bed and hopefully it goes away. And some time passes, and I go, and I, I, I pass out, I wake up. Oh dear lord, I'm in so much pain. I pass out, I wake up. And keep in mind, it's not like hours in between. It's maybe like 10 to 15 minutes in between passing out, waking up, passing out, waking up. Just in sheer jolts of pain. I barely, I maybe drank like a cup of water that entire day. Because I just couldn't get up. I maybe peed once, and then I almost fell in the bathroom because I was in so much fucking pain. But it wasn't just pain. And this is where the whole drug thing pulls in. Because I was having what I could only describe as the most vivid fever dream I will ever have in my life. And I don't know what a fever dream is. So in my brain, it is a dream that I'm having while I'm on a serious fever. So it's con it's like melting into my brain, like melted into my memory. Because I remember this thing fully and completely. And it was the weirdest fucking situation I think I've ever heard. Uh, it was a hostage situation. I'm going to tell you guys what it is. It was a hostage situation. Uh, so it was like, a, like, a, like a, a group of it was one or two people had like a whole building like the bottom floor of it. I'm thinking like a 30 to story skyscraper. The whole bottom floor of that building was was held hostage by like one or two people, and I was not part of the police, but I was with the police trying to talk them out of doing this, trying to make get to release the hostages. Um, and the thing is, none of the words I was saying made sense. None of the words that the, p the police around me were saying made sense. None of the words that anyone was saying made any sense because they weren't words. It was numbers. And it wasn't numbers. It was one specific number. I don't know what this number has to do with anything in my life. But the only thing that anyone in that dream was saying was Radical 2. They were just saying it, and you could see, like, the speech bubbles with dozens of Radical 2s in the speech bubbles. Because like, just in case I needed subtitles for my own dream, there was literally, like, I could see them talking Radical 2, and I hear them talking Radical 2. It's, all, it's the only thing they could say. And every time I woke up, the only thing that was going on in my head was Radical 2. I'd see numbers scrawling across the frickin' the ceiling that I'd be staring at, and it'd just be Radical 2, Radical 2, what's going on with Radical 2? And I'd be in so much fucking pain and so confused, I'd just, I'd, I'd be in pain, I'd go back to bed, and then I wouldn't, I, the moment I'd close my eyes, I'd be right back in the dream, but it would always be like a little bit further, like we'd get a little bit closer to the building, we got into the building, we went upstairs, we're on the roof now, there's a helicopter with a megaphone screaming Radical 2 at these hostage people, and it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and this went for the entire day. The dream never changed. It was the exact same every time. Because again, but the, the, the situation escalated a little bit more. And it peaked at the helicopter. Like, firing radical twos at the people at front. Which I can only assume weren't bullets. They were just words. They were just screaming at these people on the roof. But it was the weirdest fucking thing. Because then again, every time I woke up, the only thing that would ever come across my head was Radical 2. I'd need to pee, I'd be like, pee, Radical 2, rad Radical 2. Like my brain had nothing else going on that entire day. It was just like, what does this mean? Why does this mean? I don't understand. <laughs> Help. <laughs> I, it was the fucking most bizarre experience I'll ever have in my life. 
and it, I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> it wasn't a drug trip. I don't think it was a fever dream, but I'm going to call it a fever dream because I have no idea what else to call it. Radical 2. That's what I can call it. That's what I can call it. Thank you all for tuning in this episode of uh, Cannibal Crossing Quickies. Very bizarre story. I don't understand it. Uh, maybe you do. If anyone, if any of you are like armchair psychologists, feel free to like diagnose me with math <laughs> or something. Just don't, just don't do it in Radical Two. If you say Radical Two, I'm going to cry. Because it, it's still every time I see Radical Two to this day, it still it reminds me of that day, and it freaks me to fuck out. I don't understand what's going on. I don't know if the system was breaking. I don't know if I was trying to break free from the code. Uh, I have no idea. It was a very bizarre time. But thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you all next time. And also later today, with Pipe Chop Simulator. Maybe a demo. I don't really know. Take care, y'all. Bye now.